propositional growth, true gay love mystically <coughs> redeemed to a satisfyingly embodied adult life, the deserving hero existentially exalted to that value of degree from developmental failure and life crippling shame. This most loving embrace and richly productive bonding with the hot breath buddy double soul successfully channels and auspiciously transforms the upwelling crude libido of primal instinctual psyche to forge a viable bond with the archetypal self, vigorously sustaining a realistically sturdy sense of reliably stable ego in harmoniously well-rooted gay identity and dedicated to the assertive functioning of an enhancedly felt and clarifyingly known personhood that, in this salubriously constituting way, valuationally includes the basic masculine and feminine qualities. Healthy gay identity formation, then, consists metaphorically of the ancient initiatory journey through the darkly phonic realm shamanically, by which a responsibly desirous man crowningly, renewingly gains a treasured sense of more androgynous or whole self in a robust figurative partnership of inner beauteous strength and wonderfully inspiring creativity with the all-encompassing God of most meaningfully fulfilled and capaciously awakened personality as valuably homosexual. Within the budding subjectivity of a fortunate gay man to be, the vital double soul is celestially faithfully aroused and amorously and mesmerically calls out to him phallically. And if such a nobly designated boy heartfully enough responds to that numinous invitation to the epic narrative romance, which is mythically entailed in this fiery, geminating signal, he thereupon lets the instigated rape buddy into his freshly emergent life to now well sprout up involvingly there so, and in due gestational course, the fruitional struggle is actively then joined between striving proto-consciousness and the prospectively disputatious unconscious that we have been exploring. Successful psychic resolution is the solid accomplishment of a luminous, perfected soul, able to maturationally sustain the conflictual opposites within it and in fecund relation to it, a wholesome state well symbolized by auspiciously accomplished twinship marriage figurations <coughs> from historical myth, such as the ultimate reunion of Horus and Seth, and that of the Greek Dioscuri, the astrological Gemini. The dialectical bivalence of a soulfully aroused double archetype typically expresses itself metaphorically as light dark, above below, Older, younger, immortal, mortal, refined, coarse, dominant, submissive, even as male and female. If the glorious dew of glittering heaven incarnationally appears, majestically inseminated by the godly archetypal self as the well-earned product of its committed evolutional love, then the relationally hungry opposites are satisfyingly counseled in full return and superior renewal at the liminal source of individually experienced existence and a newly distinguished, better integrated, and improvedly energized wholeness of humanely coherent personality will in due course be realizationally achieved therefrom. That refined subjective wholeness, in turn, amounts metaphorically <coughs> to the wealthfully incorporating expression of magnanimous Aphrodite Urania, well categorically actualized, who safely contains <coughs> and reliably nurtures the tangibly living universe of worthy Uranian love within her thus so substantiating body of increasingly commodious felt experience of meaningful existential being as a same-sex loving person. This informative imagery is the considered result to our allegorical amplification of a possible gay soul figure in early personality development 
and describes the subjective evolutional workings of a procreative Uranian conjunctio, or homosexual alchemical marriage symbolism, in gay-centered analytic terms of its principal operating metaphors, an archetypally self-awakening confirmation for self-determinationally growing good gay personhood that we can now thematically encapsulate as the riveting romance of the phallic double, as the hypnotic haunting of the wraith body soul. This omnivorously haunting romance assuredly induces and manifestly consists of a dynamic and vigorative sequence in the personally emergent psyche of thesis, antithesis, synthesis through which prior libidinal combinations are dialectically broken down and freshly expansive holes are transcendentally created in an ongoing mutational incorporation of healthful elemental development and viable psychological existence as gay, a refining differentiation and progressive reintegration of cumulative valuational effect amatively fueled atomically from an infinitely surging source by intelligent homosexual libido, by the spirit of heavenly Uranian arrows. Thus figuratively considered, the purposive romance of the vital double soul, once set into fateful teleological motion through the shaping Uranian complex, can be regarded as a greening motor of goodly subjective evolution in modern gay men, as well as producing a most valuable end result, the tangible creation of treasurable new consciousness and empoweringly felt personhood, wholesome gay individuation of the fertile subjective domain proceeding through successive enactments of the incestuous Uranian conjunctio motif. The twin soul itself, as we can see in exploring the related ancient Egyptian idea of the Ka, can further be amplified as actually consisting of seven constituent pairs of complementary aspects, thematically articulating a qualitatively ascending nutritional sequence, from elementary subsistence to splendor and radiance, with each satisfied pair forming an improvemental step on the resulting transportive ladder of its aggregate embodied maturation. This uplifting pattern, of course, is that metaphorical divine ladder of verdant valuational perfection in the sacred psychic heartland of homosexual romantic love that we have already looked at in terms of the transcendent call to venereal mutuality between an enthusiastic man and his essential same-sex soul figure. And from this comparative observation, it can be considered that only with the fully actualized development of all 14 qualitative soul aspects can a devoted gay man victoriously ascend to the latter's conflictory top. Just as the shining sunboat is successfully harnessed in Egyptian thought, with Ra's seven pair pairs of renewed soul twin qualities when it triumphantly conveys him beaming anew into the virgin sky at dawn. He might well imagine then that insensibly considering the likely shape of wholesome gay individuation to its entire psychological completion, we could analogously see the aggregate body soul itself materializationally develop with the ego along a larger Uranian ladder through seven distinct forms, seven shining epiphanies of the originatory and spiriting essence, each brightly constituted form even more richly refined compositionally than the one before it, each relationally integrating with the partnering man in an again enlarged identity and personality to progressively pull him up 
to confront the growthful Typhonian sequence of a new double form at the next expansive level of possible aggregate individuation. From this broadened perspective, <coughs> the contemporary formation of laudable gay identity can be depthfully pictured as reflecting one full working of the motoric divine ladder's mutational effectuation, realizationally, in the subjective eternal art of fervent gay desire, as a purposeful motivating force for just so specifyingly growing valued psychic incorporation homosexually. So, you can appropriately imagine that when a sincere gay man is able to productively bond with his genitally conjugated double in a sustaining ego-self axis, or connection to the archetypal self, through a well-empowered and fluently nurturing gay identity, reliably secured ideologically, he has achieved the first elevating rung, liberatorily, on a more comprehensive divine ladder of his wealthful elemental potential for full subjective particularization. For example, to take a Hindu metaphor, the kundalini energy has been seminally aroused in the bottom muladhara chakra of a bigger possible wholeness, eloquently manifesting the centralizing ego self axis there in the firm birth of a good self-concept as worthily, integrally gay. This solid constitutional success would, in metaphorical turn, represent the least conscious, least individuated level of satisfyingly confirmed relationship, elementally possible realizationally, with the vivifying double asshole but also as capably containing the still more estimable potential for six additional forms of increasing constituent perfection within itself, each in generational succession, procreatively rising from the prior one through greater conscious self-realization and productively cultivated cumulatively until all the fulfilled fundamental qualities of the thereby overarchingly perfected soul are well valuationally collected. Such a larger appreciation can accordingly motivate in the now integrated gay ego identity a more advanced transformational undertaking to more purposefully work with one's own personal psychology within this much extended mythic context. First, that endeavor actively entailed in fairly facing one's psychic shadow side of complicated feelings and private things, through which a more fathomful layer of transpersonal symbolic involvement can be better gradually apprehended and partnered, particularly with the aid of relevant facilitative methods such as Jungian dream work, amplification, and active imagination, about which I will have more to say in subsequent talks. Sure logistical efforts to enter this wealthily more verdant portal of superior gay becoming will likely lead, symbolically, to better enlightening participation in that ancestral sacred union mysterium which in the imaginal comprehension we are here following out, is of the largest prospective importance to meaningfully gestating subjectivity homosexually. An archetypally sourced hieros camos, or sacred marriage with the soul brother double, that wondrously and obscenely recreates in same-sex loving form the creational font of the originating primal scene whose joyous wedding ceremony reversingly ends faithfully in that bleak mortality, initiatorily leading necessarily into the foreboding but fruitful underworld, now opened up excessively through painful feeling life, thoroughly related to, expressed, and processed. 
the ultimate product of such a heartfelt, sacrificial undertaking will felicitously be the shining golden disk of gloriously revealing wisdom, the all-endowing elixir of magnificently refined life, the rejuvenated, wish-granting phoenix of royally transcendent treasure, indeed, all those evocative, experiential, and mystical metaphors referencing the richest valuational goal sincerely aimed for passionately by the finally ineffable alchemical art of sagaciously expediting, energetically enriching self-realization profitably, at last tangibly, most well-achieved qualitatively in upfront homosexual form. <laughs>